On today's Friday Fire, we talk about detoxing your life, evaluating your day, how much of your day is causing you stress, anxiety, overwhelm, how many things in your day are you stressing about that are completely out of your control, and how do you look at your life on a day-to-day basis? Do you look for the good, or are you constantly seeing the bad and the negative? It might be time to start detoxing your life. You hear all the bull about diet and exercise. Carbs are evil. Do more cardio. Never eat bread or cookies again. Just do a juice cleanse. We get it. We fell for all of the BS too. It's time to go right to the source with the truth about how to live a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. I am Liz. And I'm Becca. We are your nutrition educators and this is The Food Code. Happy Friday. Yes. Hello. Hello. Happy Friday. Liz and I are about to head out of town together. It's going to be fun. I am really excited. I am like going to fangirl. I hope hope not awkwardly. Um, I know. Liz and I are taking a road trip to St. Louis. Um, We are going to Emily Frisella's Women in Business Seminar, which I am so, so excited about. Um, She's awesome. I love her. And I love her husband, Andy, who owns First Form. And I just love everything about them. And we're hoping to see a friend or two from First Form. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually just contacted a gym down there that's an eight-minute drive. Cool. That has a sweet-looking gym. Awesome. Because the hotel gym looks decent, but it looks not, like, super, super big. And I know all the people that are going to Emily Frisella's Women in Business Seminar are going to be fit and want to work out. And yeah. so we're going to head to we're going to head to an offsite gym, I think. And yeah. it's fourteen dollars a day, Sweet. and they might discount if we both go. So and we can get Starbucks on the way back. Yeah, I know. I'm already trying to Google where Starbucks are. <laughs> we're we're really bad about not going to. Hey, we have it done really good. This is my first Starbucks this week. I got. I don't think I've gotten any. This you got week. it on Tuesday. I you got it on it. Tuesday. I ca- I always get it when I come to Liz's. <laughs> Yes, I always get it when I come to Liz's. That's I texted right. her this morning, all capital letters. Today is a Starbucks day. <laughs> Every time that I take Marcus to school, I'm like, okay, this is my treat. But he got really upset this morning because they were out of the scones. You guys know he loves the scones. And so mm. we resorted to a first form cookie dough bar. And yeah. Carson loves these cookie dough bars. But Beck and I are like selfishly, like these are our two bars. They're expensive and they're also big. Mm-hmm. Like Carson doesn't need to be eating one of those, a whole one. And... He holds them in his hand and then they mm-hmm. melt all over mm-hmm. his hand. Oh, yeah. Marcus has been eating half, but absolutely. They hold them in their hand and then it's also all over the face, all over our freaking chairs. So we ordered two new chairs mm-hmm. for our dining room and both of them are already destroyed. Like I've just oh given up at this point because it is not even like I love my best friend. She's like, oh, it's fine. I have this like cleaner thing. I can bring it over and we can clean these chairs. And I'm like, Trish, it's kind of pointless because it's going to look the same in a week. This is what toddler life is, is like. Toddler life is like. So, um, yeah, it's uh, going to be fun. Okay, so just a question because I was just thinking about you know road trip. I haven't been on a road trip in a while, but no. What is something that you used to take with you on a road trip that is horrible and you would no longer take with you on a road trip? We used to take like stacks of Pringles, and um, my sister loves red vines, so we would always have red vines. Mm-hmm. And hmm, what else did I used to bring? I don't remember. Really funny story about road trip, actually. Really fast story. So I used to work with a gym in um, Iowa. And I would go out there like once every few months. And I would work with their uh, CrossFit team that was like a very high level competitive, like won the CrossFit Games type team. Um, And I would go out there and I would bring the in-body machine. Mm -hmm. And so I would do body fat testing and all that kind of stuff. And one one year I, or one time I went out there and I would drive out there on a Friday night and then I would stay the night, work with them a Saturday morning, drive back Saturday. It was like a three and a half hour drive, two and a half, three hour drive. So I get there Friday night and at about eight, eight thirty PM, I realize I don't have the battery plug in for the in body. Mm. And so I'm panicking. Cause I'm like, does anyone, cause it's a very unique battery plug in. Like it's unique to the machine. And I was like, can I somehow figure out how to find this at like a Walmart nearby? What am I going to do? This is like the sole purpose I come out here for. And so I drove home to the gym, OCF, at like 10 p.m. at night. So think three and a half hours, three to three and a half hours each way. That's like six hours. So I drove at 10 p.m. at night. I get there, I think at like 1 a.m. in the morning or like 1230 at night, get the battery drive back and I'm eating plain rice cakes trying to keep myself awake because that's all I had in the car 
and I was dipping it in a jar of peanut butter, trying to eat, keep myself awake eating. Like I had rice cakes all over my car. Like it was just miserable. I hate being sleep deprived. I do not do well when I drive tired either, which is a major problem. I get really sleepy and I like almost fall asleep driving. That won't happen with Liz in the car because I'm, I'm talking to someone, but I'm not good on road trips by myself. Like not good at all. Yeah, I have to distract myself. I usually listen to like Audible or like sing most of the time. Sometimes I'll mm-hmm. call like family or friends and like catch up with them. But yeah. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about like, I remember maybe two years after I graduated college, a couple of friends uh, from Naperville decided we wanted to take a road trip down to Nashville and see one of our other really good friends. And so it was a really fun trip, but Oh my gosh, the shit that we brought with us. So combos, remember combos? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. combos were awesome. They're like Starburst kind of. No, combos is like little cracker oh, no, things. Oh no, 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 I'm thinking of, um, what are the name of those? Mambas, Mambos? Oh yeah, they're like chewy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. never mind. Um, so combos, <laughs> I mean, of course, Pringles are like a staple. And then those, I, I still really like these. I don't buy them anymore, but they're the Snyder's mustard pretzels mm. oh, the honey mustard dusted honey, pretzels yeah, yeah, so yeah. good so so good so anyways we we won't be bringing that shit with us we will be packing some we can document what good, we do yeah we can that document. might be a good that might be a good social media content document yeah. what we bring for road trips so um of course we'll bring our element t and that brings me to a giveaway that we're going to do today yeah. so we do this podcast for free. We do not monetize our podcast. We have been asked before about doing you know, ads on here or different products, promotions, and we don't want to do that. But Buck and I have an insane amount of LMNT that we would like to gift to you for leaving us a review. Because when you leave us a review, it allows our podcast to rank the charts higher and therefore other people see it on you know their recommended podcast list. And that's one of the best ways that we can grow our podcast. Because again, We don't put money into this. We don't advertise it. What we do put is a shit ton of time and energy into this, creating notes, showing up. Today, we're podcasting for several hours, and this is all free content that we give away. So the best thing that you can do to give back to us as a thank you is to leave us a review. Hopefully, it's five stars. Um, And if you do that, we will enter you to win a box of Element T, which is our favorite electrolyte packets. They are $45 a box kind of expensive, but also worth it. So if you leave us a review, we're going to put you uh, into a drawing, depending how many we get. We will give away three boxes of LMNT, and we will draw that uh, here in a couple weeks. So you will have until the 10th of this month. So this is June 3rd, the day this goes up. You're going to have a week from today to enter to win, and then we will announce it the following Monday. So again, if you have a, um, a name that's kind of funny uh, maybe, you know, it's tied to like golfer girl or something like that. That's just thinking of one of our clients, uh, my fitness pal name. I can mm. never figure out like, this is not her name. Golfer girl. Oh yeah. Okay. So, I know it's Kate, <laughs> but um, please email us at info at fitmomlife.com. Let us know that's you because otherwise we have no way of contacting you or getting hold of you if we don't know, you know, your name mm-hmm. or, you know, leave the review, send us a screenshot that you did that and we will put you into uh, enter one of the three boxes and you will be able to pick the flavor of your choice. We're not going to give you the shitty flavor. Pick the flavor of your choice because we appreciate you taking the time to leave us this review. Yeah, absolutely. So today we are talking about cutting things out of your life, detoxing your life essentially. Because here's the problem that I think a lot of us run into, moms especially, I will say, you're people pleasers. You want everyone else to be happy. You want to make sure everyone else's plates are full. You want to make sure that, you know, There are no stones left unturned for your children, for your spouses, for anything for your family. You're the one that is always jumping at taking on the next task. But your cup is empty. You are either exhausted, you are miserable with yourself because you have not ever filled your cup because you're constantly filling everyone else's cup. Maybe you're wrapped up in a lot of drama with friends because you want to be a good friend. You want to let... How many times I have heard clients tell me, well, I was on the phone with my you know, sister or my mother-in-law and they just complain and they complain. And I'm like, don't fucking answer the phone. Tell them that you're busy. Mm-hmm. Tell them, hey, I have about... I, what I do, if I do not want to be on the phone for a long time, 
back it up to a meeting. Hey, I got 15 minutes right now I, at 3.15 before my 3.30 meeting. Can we chat then? Give a time frame. Do not let someone time suck you when they are not adding anything to your life other than negativity. Like, you know those people. And God love them. I love my family. I love a lot of my friends. I'm not calling any names out here. There are some people that are those people that are just, there's always complaining. There's always negativity. There's all like, it just, you get off the phone with that person and you just feel worse. You feel like they have sucked life out of you for that day. You do not need that in your life. And we need to cut it out. Like, you are in control of whether you answer that phone call or not. You are in control of whether you agree to set up your, you know, aunt or Susie's 40th birthday party because your family doesn't want to do it. So you took it on. Like we need to stop doing these things that are taking from us so much that don't give anything back. Yeah. And I think the easiest way to do this is to stop participating in the problem. Like you said, like either don't answer the phone, put a time limit on it. For me, honestly, and you guys know I'm kind of a blunt person. Sometimes I'll say, what are you going to do about it? Like, I know that this is driving you nuts and I'm sorry that you're going through this, but what can you do about it? If we can't do anything about it, then we have to stop giving in our energy. Because when you're giving your time and your energy to things that are out of your control, you're taking away time and energy from things that bring you joy or fulfill you or could be spent doing things that serve you and your goals or fostering relationships, hanging out with your kids and, you know, really being happy in life. And so sometimes you might need to let that person know, like, hey, I know you're going through a tough time right now, but this is really negative. Like, are there any things that we can find that's silver lining or can we just stop talking about it and put us behind us because we can't change the situation, right? Yeah, absolutely. If it's out of your control and it's not adding value to your life, it's not making you you know, a better person or making you stronger, encouraging you to work towards your goals, cut it out. Yeah, absolutely. And like one of the best things that my old boss taught me Never come to me with a problem unless you have already thought of solutions. Because otherwise, you're just complaining. You're basically coming to me with your problems. And you want me to either just listen or you want me to find the solution for you. And that's fine. I'm happy to work through solutions with people. But if you literally are just coming to me because you want to complain about things and then I offer solutions and you're like, oh, that won't work. I don't want to hear it then. I just, I don't want to hear it. I don't need that in my life. There is way too much freaking negativity in this world right now. I don't need more. I do not need more. My that my negativity meter is maxed out. It is it, it's going to break soon. Like I just I cannot handle it anymore and you shouldn't either because it takes from you. It ta- you guys even reading social media there has been research the nervous system and its impact when you are seeing, you know, a, I mean my heart broke when the massacre at the school mm-hmm. last week like I cried that entire night to bed. I cried myself to sleep. I cried the next morning because the news was on in our bedroom and Nick had like left and was taking a shower and the news was on. And I was feeding. T- I started crying again. Like you guys, it is an impact to your nervous system and the stress that it accumulates and it has to manage when you are scrolling through social media and you see these horrible things. You see the political anger. You see the emotional anger. You see all of these things. It is triggering. Don't think that stuff doesn't affect you. It does. It completely affects you and it affects the accumulation of the stress that your body can handle. It could put you over the edge with some things. It could be a trigger for some things. I know a lot of people that have struggled a lot in this past couple of years. I think a lot because of the emotional trauma of all of this. Absolutely. Well, and we know that depression is up 400%. It's I mean, insanity. those stats came out in 2021. The shutdown, the lockdown, all of the you know hostile things that we see on social media, the bashing of people, the you know, silencing of people, and the fact that we can't come together because we have differing opinions and beliefs. Guys, like, when did we lose the ability to have free speech and share opinions? Uh. We lost that a long time ago, I think. And right now, you know, we're in a state where we have to come together. You don't have to see eye to eye with somebody, but that doesn't mean that you ruin that entire relationship. That person's still a good person. They just see things a little bit differently than you do. And I think we all owe it to each other to try to see and understand the perceptions of other individuals. But at the end of the day, you also only have so much time and energy, right? Like these are limited resources. And so what I think about personally is how am I going to feel If I look back on a year from now, like a year from now, how am I going to feel? If I look back at this year and I think, man, I didn't do anything because I let all of this negativity, you know, 
come in and stress me out. And that took away my energy and, you know, emotional energy to focus on myself and my family. Like I was sharing with the client uh, this morning, actually, as we were talking, like when things are out of your control and it's taking your energy, now you are sacrificing your energy to show up as a good mom for your daughter. Mm -hmm. Let's not waste that energy on things that, I mean, it doesn't even matter if you focus on it because you focusing on it isn't going to change the situation. Yes. It's not going to make somebody else make a different decision. It's not going to change their thoughts, their beliefs. So even if you're you know, getting into, let's say, arguments or you're bantering back and forth with people on social media, I'm here to tell you guys, it's pretty freaking pointless. Mm -hmm. So stop doing that. I mean, some people are like, well, I don't want to back down. Well, at the end of the day, just don't put yourself in the situation to get into these you know, controversial arguments. I used to do this with my father-in-law and I realized very quickly it was pointless. He is never going to change his opinion mm -hmm. on certain things. And no. honestly, he wasn't going to change my opinion on certain things. And so we just agreed to disagree, but I still love him. I still want to see him. I still honor and respect him as my father-in-law. And so the thing here is that you have to remember with your mental energy, you only have so many Fs to give, right? You only have so many of, um, you know, I would say like cares in the world that you can give. As Like you said, eventually the meter runs out. Yeah. And we have to remember at the end of the day, when you lay your head on the pillow, how you show up for you, how you show up for your life, how you show up for your husband or your, your relationships, how you show up in your job, how you show up for your kids. Those are the only things that matter. Mm -hmm. If you are a good person and you are showing up as a good person, that's what you need to focus on. Stop worrying about what other people are doing because you're never going to change them. Yeah, you guys, you need to understand that at the end of the day, if you look back at your day and there's like co constantly things that are bothering you or causing anxiety or you just feel like you're overwhelmed, there's most of that that you cannot control. And so I would challenge you, take a poll, take an evaluation, look at your day, literally get a notebook and write down at the end of the day, what stressed me out today? What seemed to bother me? And highlight the things that you can actually control. I bet you'd be surprised. And don't lie to yourself, you guys. There's a lot of stuff you can't control. There's a lot of stuff that you think you can, but you cannot actually control. And so evaluate and think about what can I control? If there are things that are on there that you can take control of, write solutions brainstorm solutions. Start thinking in a different way. Start thinking in a different light. When problems arise, okay, sure. Am I someone that never complains? Absolutely not. Liz and I talk to each other all the time, but you know what always happens after we like have event session? Either one of us is like, okay, I'm done. Done with that. Moving on. And it's, I have a moment. I have a moment where I get overwhelmed or frustrated or anxious or whatever it is. But then I realize that was a moment that is not what defines me. That is not going to let the rest of my day be that way. I'm going to move on from it and I'm going to go in a different direction. And one of the best ways that you can do this is actually gratefulness. And you can do, um, there's a book called Law of Attraction that talks about writing down one amazing thing that happens to you every day. And what you start to do is you start to notice how many good things there actually are because you find the good. You guys, life is a matter of perception. How do you see your life? If you constantly see the negative in your life, guess what you're going to continue to see? Lots of negative because you've trained yourself to do that. Those people that do gratefulness every day, those people that are looking for the good, they are the happy people in the world. There is lots and lots of research that shows people that do gratitude daily are happier people. People that have purpose in their life and people that do gratitude. Those two things can completely change your life. And so evaluate, are you that person? Are you the person that is always negative? Guess what? You aren't going to change until you force a change. So get rid of the shit that is bogging you down, that is out of your control, that you keep harping on, that keeps being the problem with your life. Stop making it the problem. You are making it the problem. So evaluate and start finding better things in your day. Start finding happier things in your day. I listen, there's a lot of things that stress me out in the morning. Taylor's whining or crying. Carson's telling me 17,000 times he doesn't want to go to school. I'm trying to get ready. We're rushing out of the house. I'm trying to make sure I have food or Nick has food. whatever's going on. I have to feed the dog. Like there's a lot of things on our to-do list in the morning that stress me out. I find the good. I think about what's good. Carson asked me less today that he didn't want to go to school. He mentioned it less, which to me, 
was a win. That was a win this morning. He didn't cry walking into class, Nick said. They literally had to do 35 high fives and 35 hugs. That's what we're working with right now. But it was a win. I'm not still thinking about, okay, he still wasn't bothered. He was still upset. Like There were still meltdowns, but I find the good. How are you finding the good in your day? Thank you for listening to The Food Code. If this episode resonated with you, please share, rate, and review as this helps us reach others around the world. With that, thank you for listening. We'll be back soon. Love you guys.